Let me get appearance of council again, starting with council in the courtroom. Thank you, Your Honor. Keisha Miller, bar number 13539 for the plaintiff. Rebecca Master Angelo for the Robertson Counter Defendants, 5417. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Backus. Yes, the number 473 appearing for ABJ Baseball LLC. All right, Mr. Friedman. Good morning, Your Honor. Matt Friedman, 11571. On behalf of Frazier, you know, I do apologize. I was having a one five router malfunction at about the worst time that I was able to reboot it. So I apologize for everybody. I do appreciate it. It's patient. It's okay. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. All right, Mr. Hayes. Good morning, Judge. Dale Hayes on behalf of Buddy Gordon and Tigers Baseball LB 9056. All right, good morning, everyone. So this is a case management conference to. Uh, one, figure out the status of settlement, and two, to reset um, uh, the case schedule following uh, several settlements. Um, and I, I did re review the status report that was filed yesterday. Um, I very much appreciate that you all got together and took the time and filed a joint status report. Uh, as I understand it, most of this case has settled. Is that correct? Let me start with plaintiff's counsel, whoever wants to speak. That is correct. We are in the middle of resolving the settlement agreement and releases on two of the parties, but the um, position in the status report is correct. We'll but, have one set, two sets of remaining litigation after all the execution of the releases. So I'm not going to ask you for the terms of settlement right now, but um, is it plaintiff's position um, and counter defendant's position that uh, you all have uh, a binding legally enforceable settlement with Mr. Backus's clients and Mr. Hayes's clients? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and let me turn to Mr. Backus. Mr. Backus, is it your position that your client has a binding legally enforceable settlement with the plaintiffs and counter defendants? Yes, we do. We just need to ink the documents. All right, very good. And Mr. Hayes, is it your position that your clients have a binding legally enforceable settlement with the plaintiffs and counter defendants? Yes, it is, Your Honor. All right, very good. And so is it my understanding then the only parties that are left are the plaintiffs and Mr. Friedman? Or sorry, yes. Mr. Friedman's clients. Yes, Your Honor. I, 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 Your Honor, I, I totally understood what you were saying, although I, it's not always my, my preference to be personally involved in these cases. <laughs> uh, but yes, Judge, that, that is my understanding. It is uh, the, the plaintiffs and my client are still as, as of yet to be unresolved. Okay. Are there counterclaims against the plaintiffs? Yes. There are, Judge. All there right. are answering the counterclaim. Very good. So can we say goodbye to Mr. Backus and Mr. Hayes? Yes, Your Honor. I believe so, Judge. All right, very good. I'll see you all next time. It was a pleasure uh, seeing you briefly in this case. Nice to see you. Thank you, Okay, so it sounds like as between uh, the remaining parties, um, you need a date for the filing of the motions to compel and motions for a protective order. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. That is correct. Is there... Do you all need to meet and confer again? I don't want to meet and confer this to death. The only reason I'm asking is, have the settlements changed the landscape of discovery in any way where you need to meet and confer again? I don't believe mm -hmm. so, Your Honor. I don't, I don't believe so. Okay, Mr. Friedman. I, I would agree, Judge, in my view, no, and more to the point, um, right on the, um, we had already engaged in, in, in meet and confer processes, and in fact, I, I believe, at least from my office's perspective, and at least from when I spoke with Attorney Parsons um, and Attorney Mastandrillo in, in the run-up to this, I believe we all agreed that um, we, we, that had been done, and sort of we were at that stage where the motions, uh, to, you know, the, that, that our discovery motions would be right and we would be prepared to bring them. So I think that's really where we are. We just need a new date by which you want to receive those on that sort of initial set of discovery, um, which was just sort of a limited uh, pod that you had authorized. Okay. Your Honor, I, I might need to change my representation okay. and make the court aware. Uh, ATP will be getting off of this case. We've already discussed okay. it with our, our client. They did uh, request that they have some additional time to hire new counsel. So we, well, our office has done the meet and confer and I believe everything would be right to go forward on the motions. The, my only hesitation is, is that new counsel might want to have a meet and confer about the same discovery issues. Are they seeking to, are you, seek, are you going to 
make a motion to withdraw? Yes, Are they sir. seeking to substitute? Well, we're going, we, our plan is to file a motion to withdraw, but we want to give them time to substitute. So they're looking for a new counsel right now. Okay, so. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just a bit confused. I want to make sure I understand because, to my knowledge, plaintiffs have not one, not two, but three distinct sets of counsel. I understand they come from different sources, but um, they, they, I've been working most closely with Attorney Parsons. Um, I know Ms. Mastangelo is defense counsel vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the parties, I believe, homeowners insurance policy and then H&P were their original counsel. So who's the new counsel? Kind of get, get a sense of clarity here of where we're going. It's also news to me and not the representation that was made throughout uh, any of our discussions, and I'm just a little concerned about the delay. Your Honor will do what you will do. I certainly don't want to, you know, if ultimately there's a need to do it, I, I'm not, I'm not here to say that, that it's impossible. I'm just confused. Okay, so let's uh, let's take this one step at a time, Mr. Friedman. I, I want to resolve this counsel issue first. Who's the who's the third set of counsel? Okay, so let me make sure the court's aware. So Mr. Parsons is not plaintiff's counsel as far as he's never made an uh, appearance in the case. He is their personal counsel. Okay, that, that's fine. He might not be counsel of record, record, but clearly it seems he's been involved. Yeah, sure. Because Mr. Friedman has clearly had conversations with him. So, um... And let, let me be clear. I'm, I'm not looking in any way, Judge, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm not looking to loop Steve, Mr. Parsons, into any situation that he's not contractually obligated to or has not engaged uh, with the Robertsons. I was just a little confused for clarity's sake. I do know that H&P were originally plaintiff's counsel, and I do know that they brought defense counsel in vis-a-vis -vis the insurance policy once um, they made those, you know, once the counterclaims came in. And I believe Mr. Parsons came in in an effort to facilitate sort of a structured way to settle the case and mediation and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. All of that's perfectly acceptable. I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to orderly move forward. So I assume Mr. Parsons is, if they substitute in counsel, it probably will not be Mr. Parsons. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, you're in the case until you withdraw. So if you, and I do, as a matter of courtesy, if counsel has filed their motion to withdraw, I usually allow that process to play out, but you haven't filed your motion to withdraw yet. So okay. I'm, if HMP wants, to, you're either in or out, right? Yes, or at the very least, you're in a legally, you're in a legal process to get out. And right now you're in, you're yes, not sir. in a legal process. So um, I would, if you want to get out, I would say file your motion to withdraw. Um, typically that takes, right now, I think we're probably scheduling hearings about four to five weeks out. So you file your motion, that gives them 30 days to find new counsel before you're out. Yes, Your Honor, and I just want to make the court aware as far as scheduling the motion. Uh, while we're in, of course, if it falls within the period of time we're, we're in, but I want to make the court aware as we're setting up the schedule that we are either going to file a motion or they'll have substitution of counsel. So you can set the schedule however the court prefers. But okay. we'll file the motion to withdraw in the interim. Um, because I take Mr. Freeman's point is like even if you file your motion to withdraw, th these motions are ripe. Okay, I, I remember I was either on the precipice or we were they were going to be filed, and then everybody wanted to go to settlement before. Um, so look, everybody's been happy enough with a stay. This is a 2022 case. Everybody has been happy enough with a stay during settlement. So I'm gonna keep this a little bit longer and I'm going to let this anticipated withdrawal process play out but the motions will be filed in 60 days with or without new counsel so um, I'm going to set a deadline right now for the filing of the motions in 60 days the stay is going to concurrently lift other than for today. Stay is going to concurrently lift, and um, we're going to get this case back on schedule uh, with the filing of the motion. So let's give them um, 60 days is approximately middle of July, I think? Yeah, July 17th. Okay, so um, we'll do filing of motions by, because I'm not going to check on them until the 19th, filing of the motions on July 18th.
and um, we'll do an in-chamber status check on July 19th to ensure that motions have been filed. Um, any stay of the case will be lifted as of 12.01 a.m. on July 18th. Um, the state obviously does not apply to any motions to withdraw that the court anticipates will be filed or any substitutions. And um, we'll brief them in the um, ordinary course. I assume there's going to be competing motions, it sounds like. And so uh, you all probably need at least the ordinary course. And then after the motions are filed, if you all need to extend any time, um, there's much fewer lawyers involved now. So I assume a stipulation in order <laughs> will be much easier yes. to get together going forward. Yes. All right. so I would just, if I, if I may, and I, and I understand your honor's orders and, and based on the timing, I can say that, that our motion was drafted uh, and truly we, we held it solely for the purposes of attending mediation. And, and I understand counsel's, you know, maybe limited with what she can share, but while well, 60 days may make a lot of sense for the filing of the motions to compel, can we at least get a deadline by which a motion of withdrawal will be filed? Because my attitude is if they ultimately are not going to get that motion on file, there's really no need for a 60-day stay. They have defense counsel in this matter. It's really plaintiff's counsel. Um, as I understand the representation, it's that they have current defense counsel. They just are their plaintiff's counsel is withdrawing. Right. Well, this... Defense counsel is not going to be making, doing anything on the affirmative side. Correct, Your Honor. Thank you. There, there's a clear line clear. in the sand from that insurer, I'm sure. I'm my, sure. To be defending my motions to compel on my claims because I'm seeking discovery on my claims as well, right? Yeah, I get that. I would, frankly, I would prefer to like hear everything at once. There may be overlapping discovery. So on and so forth. So I understand. I, I understand, Mr. Freeman. Now that you're there is apparently, you know, you all have obviously you all have not been able to reach accord with your client, and I know that your client is probably uh, eager to get this case behind him one way or another. So I do appreciate that. When does H and P think they can file their motion to withdraw? Next week, Your Honor. If you give us a deadline, May thirtieth, sure. right after Memorial Day, we'll be we'll be good to file before that. Okay, so um, it's the 15th. I'll do an in-chamber status check um, on May 24th for filing of H&P's motion to withdraw as plaintiff's counsel. Um, if I don't see a motion to withdraw, I'm probably going to bring everyone back in on an, another case management conference and reconsider Mr. Freeman's request to advance the, um, uh, advance the deadlines here, okay? Okay, that's the Friday before Memorial Day. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so I'll do a status check on that day. So I start my, I start looking at stuff in the morning and then in the afternoon. If by like four-ish, I don't see a motion to withdraw, my law clerk starts issuing orders. Yes, sir. Okay? <laughs> Just to let you know. Yes, sir. I got it. <laughs> no problem. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, congratulations to the extent uh, you were able to settle. Um, I look forward to seeing you again to the extent you were not. Thank you, Robin. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you. See you all next time.